Um, good to be here, folks. Um, never has the phrase good to be here uh, been ever more appropriate than it has been over the past uh, few months and years. Jesus told memorable stories. Stories with very powerful messages for their hearers. However, the story he told about the son or the sons who was estranged from his family has captivated people in a way that perhaps no other has done. It's a story we can relate to. The dynamics of the core relationships are familiar to us. The emotional extremes are felt by us. It hits home on so many, many levels. The context for the story is set early in Luke chapter 15. Um, when the reading was read, it was says the, the story continues in a sense. It's carrying on from what has gone before. And the primary meaning and challenge is laid out for us before we even get to our famous family. We're introduced to a recurring theme. There is joy in the heart of God when that which has been lost is found. Even before we're told the story, we're told what the point is. God's character is on display in Luke chapter 15. And contrary to much speculation, the starting point is not judgment, it's not wrath, it's love and forgiveness. Our story begins with a problem. Being away from God has its attractions. Don't know if you knew that or not. Being away from God has its attractions. So, Our young man is exercising a defiant spirit. It would appear that up to this moment in the life of the family, this crisis moment, things have been going okay. We're not told anything to indicate otherwise. The family makeup appears to be a father and two sons, and it seems there is an agreed division of responsibilities among them. One of the sons is obviously content to let things carry on as they are. But that feeling is not shared by the other son. There is something within the younger son that is tempting him to move away from the norm. It's a familiar story. He's keen to see a bit more of the world, to enjoy a few more experiences than he can enjoy or experience while at home. Now notice, there is always or usually an assumption that those new experiences will be enjoyable. The option to break out of the status quo will inevitably mean a disruption in relationships with father and brothers. But home is not going to be enough. So he needs to be, he decides, at a distance from his father. And presumably his father's values and priorities. We are told that he chose to go to a distant country. A new way of living needed a new location. And not one where he was likely to bump into anyone from his previous life. To properly exercise his freedom, he needed to be, in his mind, a long way away. Maybe he was aware There was the first indication that a conscience might be an issue. And it's hard to be doing stuff that you maybe know isn't totally right if you're up close to people who might remind you of that. For the defiant spirit to operate properly, separation was needed. And then, and only then, could he allow his mind and heart all the distractions in the world. He had money to spend. And he was going to make the most of this moment. Only himself to be accountable to. Jesus says that he engaged in wild living. And in the process, he squandered his wealth. It's only later in the story when the older son gets involved and he lets vent his frustrations that he lets slips how at least part of his brother's wealth was spent. However, what he does with his money isn't really the point of the story. 
The story of revolves around the desire of someone to rebel from what is known to them and the consequences that then arise. Not the reaction of the father to the impending loss of the son. He decides to let him go. Nowhere is there any indication that he tried to stop his son from leaving. It had to be his choice. His free choice. No money is withheld. No matter the sense of dread he may well have felt about his son's future or the consequences thereof. For those of us who have experienced our children making life choices that we were not comfortable with, there will be a little bit of understanding of the father's pain. A defiant spirit, distance created, distractions to enjoy, but no decision to hold back. We all must be allowed to do what is in our heart to do. That is the way it should be. We have freedom to make choices, no matter the consequences that we will encounter. The second thing we point out from the story is this. Eventually, eventually there is an inner discontent. The younger son through time makes a number of discoveries. Money and the options it provides don't automatically provide answers to the bigger questions of life. He had his inheritance. He had the opportunity to spend it. He could make choices not available to other people, but it wasn't in the end enough. All the money disappeared before he found what he was looking for. He also discovered that superficial relationships don't come close either to providing the answers. He was able to buy friends, to attract people to him because of his wealth and how he wanted to use that wealth. But in the end, his needs socially, emotionally, weren't met. And he eventually discovered that where he thought he didn't want to be was exactly where he needed to be. Took a bit of time, took a bit of courage, but he got to that point. So we read what Jesus says in this story. When he came to his senses, no longer acting on impulse, but having had time to reflect and lots of new experiences to process, he begins to feel a deep, deep inner discontent. And he thinks again about how he might approach the challenges of his life. So, we move on and we discover that saying sorry is the beginning of a restored relationship. In the situation he finds himself in, saying sorry is necessary for a variety of reasons. It's necessary because the brokenness of relationship which he left behind him. He didn't have to walk away from his family, but he did. His choices deeply affected those he was close to. A brother had two jobs to do now, and a father, presumably because he knew his father, his father had a broken heart to live with. Sorry is necessary because of the choices he has subsequently made. Many of those choices were based on selfish decisions. It was all about him. Other people have been affected by his attitudes and by his actions. He has used other people. And significantly, at this point, he goes deeper. He recognizes damage in the relationship he has with God. I have sinned against God, he says. And sorry is necessary because it's only in repentance and in a state of true sorriness that he is able to know the humility of spirit which gives him the courage to contemplate going home. Repentance drains away 
the last signs of defiance and rebellion within him. And his heart, only at this time, is ready to meet his father again. However, little does he know. There is someone at home waiting to celebrate. Here lies the great wonder of the story Jesus tells. Not that the son was prepared to go home, but the father was already waiting. But while he was a long way off, physically, presumably, but perhaps even emotionally, spiritually, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. Notice the embrace and the kiss happen before the son gets a chance to say anything. The father shows unconditional love before he knows whether the son has changed. There is repentance and forgiveness and it goes on. There are no grudges. There will always be practical implications. There are relationships to be worked at. There will be lots to work through. Times have changed. But at that precise moment, past pain is smothered in the joy of the Father's love. And then there's a celebration. Parties have become difficult concepts in recent times. Um, So we'll call it a celebration, um, but you know what I mean. We already know from the way the story has been set up for us that the symbolism of the celebration is profound. In the same way, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Someone has said in commenting on this passage, there is more grace in the heart of God than there is sin in your heart. And this story speaks to us again this morning. The good news of the gospel is made clear and many continue to be drawn to God as a result of these words of Jesus. However, there is more to say, and there is a nasty sting in the tail of the story. There is someone waiting to spoil the party. Has it ever occurred to you, and it didn't occur to me for years, (laughs) has it ever occurred to you the main message of this story could be understood without the need for the older brother? The main point of the father's love is made without reference to the older son. It's between the father and the younger son. There is, I think, therefore a major challenge in this story. And that challenge is the attitude of the brother who never left home. And as such, it can be a little bit too close to home. A spirit of arrogance and judgmentalism, a lack of compassion and an absence of forgiveness. My conclusion from decades of personal observations and personal experience is that you don't have to leave the Father's home to leave the Father's heart. And many a prodigal has chosen not to return home as a consequence of the attitude of an elder brother. The sad and challenging truth is that many people have left their spiritual home not because of the character and the desires and demands of their father but because of the character and the demands of their brothers and sisters. And the response of the older brother in this story must not, must not be lost to us. So, 
Where are you this morning? Indeed, who are you this morning? Which character in the story fits where you're at? Who we are and where we are determines the nature of our response if we decide to respond at all. If you need to come home, if the distractions are not fulfilling the role in your life you thought they would, please know that there is a Father, arms and heart open wide to welcome you home. Without question. Unconditionally. And there is a celebration just around the corner. Please remember that if you're not yet quite at that point, you may find yourself in a place of being away from the Father's presence, but you are not away from the Father's heart. And a few thoughts for those of us who have chosen to stay as best as we can in the Father's home. That is, we shall, for the um, further application of the point, refer to us in the sense of his church on earth, his local church. Jesus thought enough of the prodigal to tell this story. And so must we. He hadn't given up on the prodigal. And neither must we. And so we have to make sure that the Father's heart rules the Father's house. Yeah? Too many people are driven away from the Father's house because of the attitude of the older brother. And that can be part and parcel of who we are if we don't just have a wee check up and just make sure it isn't. And too many people choose not to return because they believe they'll not be welcome. Our task is to be a church of the father and not of the brother. That's a hard lesson to learn. I have what in terms of this passage, um, I guess, and in terms of the language we use as, as Christians, I have prodigals in my family. And there are lots of reasons why that is the case. And as a dad, I tell you what, you spend a lot of time thinking over those things. But I have a prayer. I have a prayer. That if at any point in time, the prodigal chooses to return, they meet the dad first and not the older brother. And I hope and I pray that that would be the desire of our hearts in this fellowship as well, that we would be prodigal friendly. That means we have to change a bit. That means we have to be a bit more flexible and understanding and not to, oh, yeah, you, know, you know all the stuff, right? My prayer is that the prodigal meets the father first and not the elder brother. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that the Father's heart is open, the Father's home is open, and that whoever we are this morning and whatever life experience, we are welcome to return, and our return will be celebrated. Please help us, as we are part of the Father's home on earth, in practical terms, help us to make sure there will always be a welcome. And that the other stuff displayed by the older son will have no place in this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.